Hello again. Okay, folks, last but definitely not least, here is accessories before the fact. So I just want to begin by saying that um, I'm not Cheryl, I'm David. And Cheryl, you look positively ravishing. That little um, thing. Yeah. yeah. Just... And you with your with your almost formal attire, I just, I think we're ready. I think we're ready. We're going to be a class act. All right, let's, let's, let's find out. Like we'll find <laughs> out. Okay, I'll, I'll be back when I'm ready. Okay. I'm wearing a clean t-shirt underneath. You say you're wearing a clean shirt, that, but that doesn't change the fact that you should be wearing a jacket. This is a formal thing. You should have your jacket on. So you're saying that having a clean t-shirt is not enough of improvement and <clears throat> I, I should be wearing a jacket. Do I get that? Well, you're so perceptive when I say things as clearly as you should be wearing a jacket. Yes, that is what I'm saying. You should be wearing a jacket. This is, this is very important to both of us. You should be wearing a jacket. Show the seriousness of the occasion. But I'm not, maybe I, I'm not discounting the importance of the occasion mm -hmm. or how a, a jacket would gussify me in a manner heretofore, but I'm wearing a clean t-shirt. I'm, I'm hearing words like gussify and heretofore. And in that time that you said that, you could have gone and gotten a jacket and put it on. You're, you're delaying. You're obfuscating. I'm also procrastinating as long as we're, you know. Going into those. Are, yeah, yeah, you are. I mean, what's so difficult about putting a jacket on? Wow. Oh, now you're sitting down. You're sitting down. Get up. Go to the closet. Get a jacket. Put your put one arm through one sleeve, the other arm through the other sleeve. I don't even care if you button it. You don't have to button it. You could leave it just hanging loose. Just, just do what I tell you. Whatever I do for you isn't enough, is it? think you've come to the crux of the matter. Yep. Yep. So today a, jacket. today a jacket tomorrow. You know, if I die, you probably won't even cremate me like I asked you to. Oh, if, if you die. I, I'm not getting gussified for you dying. <clears throat> you wouldn't wear a jacket at my funeral. So you could have the last word? Really? Wow. Wow. The, the arrangement was, the arrangement was that you were going to predecease me so you could be the beneficiary of my estate and enjoy a very robust lifestyle. That was the arrangement. That was the whole reason you married me. <clears throat> you know, but I've realized now that there's so many things that, you know, I make plans and God laughs. You know, you know that saying. Uh, it could very well happen that I predecease you. A and then and now you're not even going to wear a jacket. And my last memory of you will be whatever I do is not enough for you. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. Maybe I'm, I'm being demanding. 
maybe a cardigan sweater, maybe a cardigan. You know, it's our daughter's wedding. I mean, something beyond just the shirt. Another kid is getting married? Do you not pay attention to anything I say? I'm out of here. Believe this? <laughs> it just, I it, was that rude. <laughs> oh, laugh! You should just. I mean, it, this, what? What? Can you believe our luck? I just. I mean, I would not, I would never have expected if you said, I'll bet you a thousand dollars that I'd be like, thousand dollars. Go bigger, go bigger, a million dollars, a million dollars. I mean, that's the kind of money I could buy a jacket with. You could buy a whole closet full of jackets. I mean, not necessarily the most expensive ones, but certainly. No, I, I mean, I don't want to be ostentatious because no. it, but this is just talk about dumb luck. <laughs> wow. I mean, who would have thought, you know, just your jaywalking, getting hit by a car, and now this million dollar settlement, I just. I'm proud of you for walking and, in that car. I really am. You know, I did that for you. Oh, gosh. All right, let me slow it down. Let me break it down. I did it for the money because I know that that is important to you and you having what you want matters to me. More than life itself. That's on the one hand, on the one hand, I do appreciate the sacrifice, Barry. I mean, the fact that you can no longer walk again means a lot to me. I really appreciate that. But if you're really thinking that much of me. Yeah, yeah. Did I miss something? Did I miss something. Well, you know, if you had actually been fatally injured. Died. I, how, yeah, died. yeah. I I could have gotten much, much more, much more. Do the math. Does this does this fall under the heading of live and learn? If at first you don't succeed, <laughs> you, know that, you know that expression. <laughs> well, but no, I I you know. I appreciate you. I'm not saying you should do anything right away. I, I can't. I'm going to be in rehab for six months. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And and <laughs> and while I'm here, I'm going to stop having affairs. Promise. Well, I think that kind of goes without saying. I mean, you're nothing much is working down there right now, is it? So it's uh it's the best of both worlds. Well, I I have a lot I have a lot more to offer than down there. Mm. Do you though? Well, that, that's what I heard. I mean, you heard. Well, I mean, she was on she was on the clock, okay. But at the end of the first hour, it was like, you definitely have something to offer other than down there. Yeah, another lesson not learned. Mm -mm. No, no, that's just. But listen, listen. I'm grateful. I'm grateful, and and if anything, uh, yeah, yeah. And 
And I may come visit you in rehab. I may. Okay. So I said, I'm going to stop having affairs while I'm in rehab. Mm -hmm. I haven't heard you say that. <clears throat> well, really? Really? Is, is that necessary under the circumstances? I mean, you know, you're going to be in rehab a while. You, you're saying you do things for me or whatever it is you wouldn't want me to go without, would you? uh up to a point you know i have said that but i mean up to a point is what i mean up, up, you never actually defined what that point was correct so as of now mm -hmm. while i'm in rehab i'm gonna say you're not in a position to negotiate right now You know, from the way you package it, I'm not going to be able to to negotiate anything meaningful, it seems like. Yeah. Yeah. You should have really thought this thing through a little bit more, I think. That I I put my life on the line. Really? really? And I ask you to stop having affairs going forward mm -hmm. and your answer is you should have planned this better i said we have nothing in writing this this is very little you could do to stop me and and well honestly you know while you're in rehab and i have all that money i'm ever so much more attractive to <clears throat> anyone everyone so <clears throat> chance you know sometimes sometimes i wonder if it's all worth it again that's a little too late to be thinking about that I made it to the top of the stairs. So great. I knew you could. I knew you could. I belly crawled up the stairs in the Empire State Building. Ripley is waiting. No, and I thought you had no goals when I met you, but look, look at you, look at you. You really, you really did something that no one else in the world has ever done or ever wanted to do. And, and you're gonna make, you're gonna make the history books. Masha, Masha, does this mean that like, like you're proud of me? I said I was proud of you. What I, I said it. I, the words came out of my own mouth. I am proud of you. Seriously. Oh, Marsha. Those stair burns that tore the hairs off of my chest as I got up to the 77th floor and I thought I wouldn't be able to make it. No. It was all worth it. I was. And those people, those people who just kept walking over you and under you and around you, I mean... You did that despite the crowds. I just, I just, you being proud of me makes all that humiliation being treated as like a floor mat. It yeah. makes my life worthwhile. That's great. I'm. It, it is. It is. I, I. I am proud of you, and I'm. I'm sorry that you're not in shape to actually see the view now. Uh, it's really pretty up here. Um. I I think you, you could you, you you could lend me a hand so I could look over the railing. Oh, well, you're kind of a mess right now. Well, I, footprints in the dirt. That's a lot of mush. You got a lot of schmutz all over you. you got schmutz. I, I don't want to. 
Yeah, but I, I mean, I have a bottle of disinfectant, and it so whatever is on me is not going to be contagious. You carried a bottle of disinfectant all the way while you were crawling up. You had a bottle of disinfectant in you. It was a plastic bottle, so it wouldn't break, and it was a recyclable plastic bottle. That's a that's a that's more forethought than I would have uh, expected of you. Really, really. So about Great. about giving me a hand so I could see the view because I I'm oh. here. Yeah. Well. No, I think I, I it's it's time for it's time for going down now. Like you just getting up is well, that's only half of it. You got to go down now. Well, we, I'll be I'll be I'm taking the elevator. I'll meet you. We, and uh, how long you think that would take? How about if you just drag me over to the elevator? That would be cheating. We got you know, according to the, the books, you know, yeah, I can't touch you. You got you got to do this all on your own. I, I would love to. I would love to help you. I don't I don't believe that for a minute. I never saw that memo. Listen, I'm your coach. I've read all the bylaws. I read all the qualifications to get you in the Guinness Book of Records and supposedly no outside help I cannot help you at all. I am not going to fucking stand for this. You are standing. How did that happen? I think, but I think that's school you're not supposed to ever get up. Not now, not yet. Oh God, where's all that? You just did all that for nothing. I actually walked up the stairs. Oh, you're a liar and a cheat. And now you're not even a record holder. I'll see you on the first floor. Yeah, maybe. Where did it all go wrong? Jerry, where? You don't want to know. I want to know. Don't, don't I have a right to know? I, I'm not, I'm not debating it. I'm just letting you know that you really don't want to know where it went wrong. You need to know so it could never happen again. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? Or just... If I thought you could handle it, I would just spew it out. But spewing, spewing. That's part of it, the spewing. I, that was no, that was not, that was not really a hint or maybe it was, but it's. I mean, look at this. Ow. Yeah. And? What just, what just surrounded by ashes? Ashes of our lives. Uh, uh, okay. And? I, th this isn't how I pictured it when we went into business together. This is, this was not, this is not how I wanted things to end. Or even, you know, come in the middle or when at the beginning or ending for any, I had no part of it. We start a business called Arson Is Us and you're surprised that it winds up in ashes? Yeah, but I didn't expect it to be so obvious. 
this is why I tell you that you can't handle it and I won't tell you where it went wrong. Just... Maybe if I'd written a business plan, maybe maybe that would have helped. Maybe it's my fault. It's my fault. That's what, it's my fault. It's my fault. Um. I don't disagree with that. You're not taking any responsibility for this? Let's see. I agree with you 100% with what you say. You say it's my fault. You don't say it's partially my fault. You don't say it's 51% my fault. You don't say that I was complicit in it, but substantially it was your fault. You say it's your fault. And what do I say? I agree. I was being generous. I figured you'd jump in and say the gentlemanly thing. Like you say, at least you had something to do with it. You know, I, you know. No, no. Gentlemanly thing. I give you full credit for an incredible failure. And you're like, if you'd only be a gentleman, things would be so much better. So, you know, the point, the point of the business was to burn down other people's businesses or homes or whatever they, whatever they hired us to do, but not ours, not ours. Not ours. I no, not ours. I, th I thought that would have been obvious. I mean, it was really beautiful. The pyrotechnics, put, putting putting our business on top of a fireworks factory. So when we went up, it was like the whole world, or at least all of Hoboken, could see. No. That was that. That was actually that's probably where it all went wrong. I think that's where it all went wrong. Um. Yeah, yeah. I mean, on the other hand, yeah. I'm thinking. Yeah. This is good branding. If we could show people how how we just torched our own business. I'm giving you all the credit for that. It's all your fault. It's all the credit is yours. I'm, I'm going to run with that. I, I got the marketing campaign. We'll figure it out. I got the perfect location set. Where? You, you don't want to know. I don't want to know. I don't want to know. That is our show. And we are accessories before the fact, whether it's arson or any other criminal activity. And I am not David. I, I am. And, and the wonderful thing about having Cheryl as my scene partner, one of the wonderful things, is she remembers whether it's accessories before the fact or after the fact. And so I just shut up and go with whatever she says. Because you're 100% right. I'll give you full credit. That's that's really the only thing I am responsible for these days. Thank you, David. Thank Silver you, Mike. Carol. Okay. Thank you, Polly. Awesome job, guys. Thank you. Hey, that, that's it for us this evening, folks. And thank, thank you, you Judy. all for coming to hang out with us here at the Polly's. Hope you enjoyed the performances. And remember, we're here Sunday evenings, 8 p.m. Eastern via the Follies Facebook page or YouTube channel. Have a great week and we'll see you next Sunday. Ciao.